Many thousands of years before the founding of the city of Philadelphia, Native Americans made this area their home. Here, they built up their camps and towns alongside the Delaware and Schuylkill rivers and close to many streams that cross the inside seam. The earliest natives, who archaeologists called Paleo-Indians, likely went to the region of Philadelphia by no less than 10,000 to 12,000 years prior. Whenever Dutch and Swedish pilgrims immigrated to this region in the 7th century, native groups lived here, and those same individuals welcomed William Penn when he ventured onto these shores in 1682. These groups called Lenny Lenape, Erie, Iroquois, mainly the Seneca in Oneida, Muncie, Shawnee, and Susquehannock. For a couple hundred years, Native Americans coexisted with European colonists who would visit Philadelphia all the way through the 1800s. They did this to trade furs for iron, tools, guns, and other desired items. As Philadelphia was built to be more and more like a city, Native American artifacts were dug up and built on top of. Though this construction has definitely dismantled a lot of artifacts, civilizations, encampments, villages, and other stuff to give us clues about the Native people's existence, not all evidence and important sites have been destroyed. They're just difficult to find or in hospital parts of Philadelphia to archaeologists. The key elements in safeguarding and disclosure of undistributed native locations in Philadelphia identify with three essential inquiries. What did the first scene inside the city look like and where inside that scene did native destinations well on the way to have been once found? How has the first scene been continuously modified by advancement throughout the years? What territories inside the present day city are probably going to have safeguarded bits of the first scene inside what Native American destinations could be found. The main Native American tribe of Philadelphia would be the Lenni Lenape or Delaware tribe. They are mainly just called the Lenape, which means the people. It isn't abnormal for some individuals around the globe to utilize the name that has a common translation. We don't know to what extent that name has been used. However, related tribes utilize comparable words. So we think it has been being used for a huge number of years. But the way they have gotten the name Delaware is the way many foreign names and titles have been made in the modern English language we use today. It has for quite some time been realized that the name connected to the native individuals who lived alongside the Delaware River was taken from the title of an Englishman, Lord De La Warr, whose name was Sir Thomas West. He was selected legislative head of the English state at Jamestown, Virginia in 1610. Once his devotees, Captain Samuel Argo, once cruised into a great sound which he named Delaware Bay to pay tribute to the representative. The waterway that streamed into the cove was given a similar name and they both were later contracted into Delaware. But the Lenape have their own version of the story. According to DelawareTribe.org, the way the term Delaware came from assumptions of what was said in a different language that was thought to be an accent or something of the sort. When a Lenape told a European what tribe he had belonged to, the European kept saying mispronunciations such as Lenape and Runape. When the European finally said correctly, the Lenape said, Nal ne da Delaware, which translates to, that's what I said. When the European heard Delaware, he thought the Native American was saying Delaware the entire time. This is pretty similar to the story 
of when a Hispanic tried coming to America and said his name was Pablo. The English man just put him down as Peter. It is also considered if the Lenape way of living was better than our current customs to live our lives. Our Culture Preservation Committee has talked about this and we think a few people would appreciate attempting it. Maybe like some sort of camp for possibly 14 days during the late spring and throughout the summer. A vast majority of our kin now live in an indistinguishable current world from every other person. We have TVs, ventilation systems, different ways of transportation, and obviously employment. The reason would be troublesome these days to locate a sufficiently expensive zone where we could hunt and graze as we used to. There are currently laws about when we can hunt and in the old way, we had no grocery stores to go to and get perishables like the present day. We need to chase and fish to keep our families alive. And the ladies dealt with greenery and enclosures and accumulated wild plants for sustenance also. It would likewise be hard to discover a zone with streams with water that is not contaminated. We have lost various things on our constrained trek west to Oklahoma and significant number of our old customary ways included making things, for example, dirt pots to cook and store nourishment in, rock nappings to make sharpened stones and rock cuts, and in living things with colored porcupine quills. We additionally lost learning of ocean animals that we would have known on the East Drift and some of our medallies and dances. Be that as it may, we have additionally possessed the capacity to save numerous things moreover. Many changes have taken place over generations as the technology in America has changed. At one point in time, we used to use flint, stone, wood, and bone apparatuses, and now we utilize metal and plastic. Our dress at one time compromised predominantly of deerskin, and now it is blue jeans and t-shirts, or suits as the event warrants. When we have our dances, festivities, and parties, we get a kick out of the chance to backpedal on our old style of deer hide and early styles of conventional garments. We hold various what we call stomp dances consistently. These are social moves done only for the satisfaction in moving. Time is continued what is known as a water jump. Sometimes when combining these things, we play Pasahimen which is the Lenape football game. It is played uniquely in contrast to the football game you know since it is played men against ladies. The men can just kick the ball from place to put, yet the ladies can toss it or keep running with it. Likewise, the men shouldn't handle or get the ladies. Rather, the ladies can do whatever they need. There are goalposts at either end of the field like general football, in spite of the fact that they have no cross piece. A sport that you may or may not have heard of that was invented by the Native Americans and commonly played by the Lenape is lacrosse. The way we play lacrosse now is with three midfielders, three players on offense, three players on defense, and a goalie. They have 12-minute quarters, 2-minute breaks between the 1st and 2nd quarter and the 3rd and 4th quarter and a 10-minute halftime. We play on a field that is 110 yards long and 60 yards wide. The equipment we use are a mouthpiece, a helmet, gloves, elbow pads, shoulder pads, cleats, a cup, and a stick. There is limited physicality, 
and the way you would score is by using a stick with a small net at the top of it to sling a rubber ball that's about the size of a tennis ball into a net that's the size of a child's soccer net. You are also not allowed to touch the ball with anything except for your stick, of course. Now, there are quite the major differences between how natives played and how we play lacrosse. For starters, there were no pads or gear whatsoever. You basically would just show up wearing your underwear and carrying a wooden stick that looks like you glued a couple of dream catchers and friendship bracelets to the top of it. There was also a range of a hundred to a hundred thousand players on the field at once instead of your normal 20. Now you may be thinking, how could you fit that on a 105 by 60 yard field? Well, they don't. They actually play on something that has no out of bounds and the distance between goals would range from 500 yards which is five times the length of a football field to several miles. This is because the teams would be two rivaling villages and the length is the distance between the two villages. You would score the same way but the goals are just the distance between two marked trees chosen for this game from each village. Anything goes, making it more like a war with a side mission, and it wasn't uncommon to see someone walk out crippled for life or not walk out at all because of the constant engagement of fisticuffs and wrestling. Lastly is the fact that some games would go on for days without timeouts or breaks. Another case of how we stay aware of innovation as it appeared by the way that an individual from our tribal council and an individual from our trust board are both pilots. Our late boss, Lewis Ketchum, had a multi-million dollar oil field pipe and supply organization in Tusla with 480 representatives and an 80-story office building. A simple example of it is also how immigration has made such a difference in what is technically Philadelphia's first religious beliefs. This would be that of the Lenape, which would be your common Native American beliefs, like spirits that bless you with ideas while you're sleeping, with unique parts to it, such as their thought of that the world was just the back of a humongous turtle's shell. In modern day, because of free will and immigration, there is no dominant or main religion, practice, or belief. Some people don't have any at all, such as atheists. Fun facts time. When Lenape boys were thought to be mature enough to become a man, their fathers would take two turtle shells and shave off the sides of their hair, making them look as if my younger brother and I did a metamor infusion. When William Penn came to America, he originally made peace with the Treaty of Shakamaxon, which is also known as the Great Treaty. Though this may be, there was actually a story of how two of William Penn's sons had broken the peace and challenged the Lenape. The Lenape made a bet and said however much land they could run within the time limit, the Lenape would give up. So the boys hired two sprinters and gave them water and food for their journey to run for them. This forced much of the Lenape tribe out. Native American lacrosse is recorded to be the first ever team sport. Those are my little fun facts and that's all the time I have today. Reese Mohammed here is saying goodbye or just see ya at school and I hope you've learned something new.